So, we've met to talk about the, uh, I guess, the most important thing in our design studio, the process. I guess so, it is. It is um, important. So, uh, there are a lot of questions to, to start with, but I think that the most important is how did it happen that we have six steps of industrial design process from the idea uh, up to finished product. Why six? Um, how can we uh, speak about them? So I think that we should start from the beginning. Yeah, so uh, I think the uh, answering that question, it would be important to mention that uh, it all came out of our need to uh, organize our work. Uh, because at uh, some very crucial uh, moment when we were uh, a bit smaller and had a lot of work, we noticed that we have some issues uh, while organizing uh, our cooperation with the clients and uh, how the projects were going. So um, it all started with our inside need uh, to, uh, to work better, I guess. Okay. Uh, inside needs are something that, that drives innovation in company yeah. and, and it, it processes. Of course, um, the problem is that uh, projects that we have are um, immensely different. Uh, so <laughs> how is that possible that we have these distinctive six steps of, of design process for designing a consumer electronic product that is small enough to put it in, in your hands? In your hand? yeah. And the same process can be applied to industrial machinery or the gyrocopter that we have in our portfolio. Yeah. How was that possible? That's true. The subjects or uh, topics of our projects are very different, but uh, I don't know if you remember, but while we are designing our design process, uh, we've noticed that we are meeting very similar mile, mile, milestones uh, along the way. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had to mm, find them, name them and uh, be sure that all of the team is on the same page regarding those milestones uh, and that helped us immensely and those milestone, milestones are something that we are um, making to be sure that each phase of the project is complete. So for example, during the pre-design that uh, big piece to finish with is a brief that we are all uh, accepting we and our client uh, during the uh, concept phase uh, these are three concepts during the targeted conceptual study uh, it is the uh, final version of the looks that uh, our client is 100% uh, sure to uh, continue with and so on and so forth so these are more of the description of, st of stuff that we have to finish with rather than the uh, just goals to meet during the uh, during the process Okay, um, does this definition or the process that we have help communicating with clients? I think so, but you, you should maybe ask some uh, biz devs <laughs> because this is the tool uh, that they uh, like really well because I think it helps to uh, introduce people out of the industry to, uh, to what we do uh, for a living and what we offer as a company mm -hmm. and uh, all of the services. Um, and I think it's uh, help also with communicating the uh, how complex the whole implementing new products to the market is because uh, now we have manageable small phases, small steps to we just go uh, one after the other and not w just huge complex uh, issue of uh, creating something new out of the thin air. Okay, so, so to sum up, uh, to recap, uh, we have this design process to inform ourselves as well uh, as, well as our clients uh, to, to, to inform the stakeholders, yeah. as, as, uh, let's call that, um, about the progress in the project. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that progress can be some kind of, have some measure Mm -hmm. So this design process has some measure, um, like what steps do we need to um, to have to deliver the product. Okay, um, I think that uh, the big picture of the design process is okay, is clear. 
that we needed to communicate, we needed to, to have this uh, roadmap yeah. and measurable roadmap on how to how how we can deliver uh, these products. Um, I think that we should jump into the numbers, into okay. into the steps that we have. Yeah. Maybe describe them in short, and maybe then we will have some more in-depth questions about these steps that we have. Okay. So, um, should we start with still naming these steps right right now, or should we start with the pre-design? Um, I think we should start pre, uh, <laughs> with pre-design, uh, because this is the most important part of each design process, because uh, what we finish with uh, at the end of that phase, it's the brief, uh, which is set in stone, it's unchangeable, and it helps us to uh, set goals with our clients. Uh, so it has, to, it has to be a phase of constant asking questions and uh, taking as much knowledge from our client, from the market, from their target group as it possible. So, um, okay, so you mean that, that the pre-design um, is a step that there no design happens? And it's still one of the most important steps in the design process. Yeah, it is like uh, preparing your stage or preparing your tool set for, uh, for uh, um, having the job done at the, at the finish. Uh, yeah, it is. Sometimes uh, we do some interviews during that phase. Sometimes we uh, ask uh, some people with expertise knowledge during that phase. So it, it is a quite. Uh, um, it requires a lot of work. But uh, as you mentioned, it, it's not designing yet. It's just uh, collecting uh, all the uh, necessary data. Okay. The Good. So um, right after the pre-design phase. Um, we will speak about the time frame of each step, <laughs> yeah. I think, later, because it's not that important at, uh, at the moment. I think the most important is understanding on understanding the whole process without going deeper into details, yeah. because... Um, details always different. I think so we will like miss a, something yeah, if, we, if we start to, 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 to be in detail with each step. So, so the second step... Um, of our design process. I think that it's one of the most um, creative, rewarding for, yeah, for the designer. And it's quite uh, also spectacular because uh, this is the point when we are creating stuff and we are uh, wearing, put something on that idea that client brought to us uh, onto our creation. We tend to um, aggregate all these ideas from the pre-design, from our expert, uh, or field of expertise from our experience that we have as designers yes. and we put all these things into a conceptual phase as it's named yes <laughs> so we deliver um, the most spectacular part of the word of the work that we have so it's called the concepts concept phase yeah uh, and that conceptual design is always a very important part for the designers because uh, this is the first time we are showing something we worked on for long weeks sometimes uh, as a, some sort of visualization and stuff like that. So this is the first time we have uh, some examples to uh, talk with our clients about uh, what they're planning to do with their businesses in future. Okay, so, so from my perspective, because I'm a designer as well. Uh, delivering concepts is difficult because it has uh, these concepts have to meet uh, all these criteria that were mentioned. Mm -hmm. But uh, it often happens that some of the criteria or requirements are not being told, and we yeah. have to distill this from the sense of our common sense of understanding of, of the client and then put it into the, uh, the conceptual phase. Do you agree with me or have some different perspectives? I think I can that? agree because uh, we are creating, we are showing something that never existed before for the first time. So it, always it's a little bit like aiming 
into a goal that is not like set anywhere because um, there is a that a very uh, organized engineer part of the brief but there's also that part of emotions of uh, what our client likes what they believe uh, their clients like or even what they're trying to build with their brand and uh, with stuff they are put onto the market for example so it is always a little bit um, uncertain maybe mm -hmm. okay some uncertain part of the brief but uh, we are I think we are doing what we can to uh, make that part as small as possible okay mm -hmm. so, so th this point of uh, uncertainty uh, as small as possible yeah <laughs> okay um, well so that's why we've got not only one concept in this phase we've got three yeah so that they are more um, looking more on a broad uh, uh, picture of what our clients possibly need yeah usually we are trying to uh, told them, show them uh, three ways or three scenarios they can go towards because uh, we know that their story can be told on three at least three different ways uh, and usually we are also talking about that during the pre-design phase. Uh, we're talking about how different those concepts should be for them to help them choose. Because some clients want to see very different direction they can explore with uh, their project further. And some of them uh, prefer to uh, see more um, close to each other concepts, for example. Because uh, it's always... Um, um, it's always their the decision to um, to lead the way. We are just there to help, basically. Okay. Yes, and that's important to mention that we are uh, doing as hard as we can to help. Yeah, <laughs> to help. <laughs> uh, we are not the uh, the clients themselves. Yeah. Uh, we are serving them um, and delivering uh, their ideas into reality. Okay. Um, but as with other piece of art uh, like paintings, uh, yeah. every creation is not perfect. That's so true. that's why we have the third step in our design process that is called targeted conceptual study. And um, what are the differences between the, 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 the former one, the, the, the conceptual study? Mm, it starts with the choice that we are not making. <laughs> it starts with the choice that our, our client makes. Uh, mm, I mean that choosing the one of the three concepts to, to proceed with. Uh, and then the roles switch a little bit because uh, we're not asking questions, but we are asked questions because our clients sometimes ask us what they can change in that um, concept to make it more suitable for their needs, to make it more uh, good looking in their opinion, for example, or... Um, this is the stage of project where we are tuning that looks, that design uh, to uh, what our client needs. Because finally, we have some examples, as I mentioned before, to talk about. Because finally, we can see uh, how it can look in the future. Yes, yes, this is something important because we cannot speak in, in the void, as I, as I like to say. Yeah. Because uh, when we are speaking on general facts or general yeah. arguments it's not possible to focus on the on the functionality on the on the impression that we have yeah. without this picture that we that we produce during these phases yeah the impression is really important so that's uh, i think uh, when we have it <laughs> we can work better and we can uh, kind of be on the same page uh, with the clients because Sometimes we are just like imagination to rent mm -hmm. <laughs> and creativity to rent and uh, that helps us to talk with someone yeah. who doesn't have it, okay. for example. That's true. Um, so how about being halfway to the product uh, because we are halfway? One of the first step was pre-designed, the second yeah. step is conceptual phase. Uh, the, the third step, we've got targeted conceptual study so that we've got this idea this uh, 3d looking thing yeah. uh, that we know that it might look like this but how to make it possible 
Mm, we have a few more steps to go. <laughs> and, uh, and the next one is mechanical design, which we are uh, focusing on the inside, of mainly, of the, of the design, because um, the target of conceptual study is just the visualization, the renderings of, uh, of some ideas. But uh, these are the just floating shapes, I would say, in general. So we need to make it more engineered, to make uh, some uh, room inside for the electronics, or maybe to connect the house of the housing together. So this is um, working on the stuff that usually are uh, unseen and uh, untalked about when we are w when a regular person is using the object. So yeah, so it's focusing on the. Um, pure functionality and engineering, I would say. Okay, but is that possible that we've, we are developing the concept into the mechanical model or mechanical phase uh, without looking at these aspects before? No. <laughs> uh, okay. Technically correct uh, design concept always uh, has some level of thinking about that. On the previous phase, we are focusing uh, mainly on the looks and on the ergonomics, I would say, uh, but we are not focusing as much on the inside. So we are thinking about uh, size of the electronics, for example, but we are not uh, designing the mounting of that electronics yet, for example. So it's like a um, mechanical phase is like going the level deeper into okay. the uh, okay. designing stuff. And thinking about the technology itself, how this part might be manufactured. Uh, it is. At this point, uh, it should be at least uh, narrowed down in which uh, technology the uh, future product will be uh, manufactured in. Uh, because some requirements of different technologies might influence the, the inside structure or even outside structure of, uh, of the object. Okay. Um, should we mention that mechanical model or the, the model, the 3D model after the mechanical phase might be a, a bit different than the conceptual one? I think we should mention that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we're usually mentioning uh, this, especially in uh, this uh, day and age when, uh, for example, electronic component market is quite fluent or liquid. We are uh, not sure if the components we are planning to use in that uh, design electronic piece, for example, uh, will be um, accessible to buy, for example. Yes, so, so, so even though that we are designing hardware and a physical product, we still have to have room for some kind of agile uh, yeah, but, um, methodologies, like we have to um, tweak the design mm -hmm. so that it is possible to manufacture in the future. And uh, it is a challenge, but I think that is a challenge that on the very base of that industry, of industrial design, uh, I would say, because uh, it's our role to kind of fight for that design and ergonomics and not to give up to uh, those changes and requirements without uh, thinking how to uh, damage control, <laughs> I would say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damage control in, uh, in hardware is really important. <laughs> Okay, because we have to predict the, uh, the neg neg negative scenarios, yeah, I think, well. more often than in software. Exactly. Because once we design something physically, it's not that easy to change. Yeah. Um, in it's not software. In, yeah. Yes, <laughs> in, in, uh, whereas the opposite direction is a software where you can change uh, every little aspect of the, of the entire system um in i don't know maybe days maybe hours yeah okay um, but it just a matter of time or something else i think it's a very iterative process so we kind of we design some version of that uh, 3d model for example we prototype it we test it and we improve our design and again, we prototype it, we test it, and we improve our design. So this is something that uh, never happens with like uh, with one go or with one take. It always takes time because 
uh, we cannot predict uh, how the materials will uh, sometimes uh, act, we cannot predict uh, how the electronics will fit inside on the first go, uh, but uh, it is important to look for those solutions and to look for them in the physical world already. So uh, it is, uh, as I mentioned, iterative. Okay, we will focus on the prototyping word uh, as well maybe not so uh, in a detailed way, but for sure it's worth mentioning that industrial design process is a process of prototyping mm -hmm. and uh, improving the prototypes uh, and, and making the different prototypes for each yeah, project. Yeah, for a different use. You know. For different use, but I think that we should still focus on, on the process itself uh, of course, the prototyping is a uh, very exciting important one also. and exciting, <laughs> but uh, okay, let's go this waterfall process that we have. Uh, if, if uh, for whatever reason, something goes perfectly well after the mechanical phase, we've got this model in one shot. What comes next? Whoa. Uh, I think we should a little bit switch roles because uh, next phase is DFM, Design for Manufacturing, and this is the phase that uh, I believe you are more experienced uh, than me. Uh, so maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit about how to uh, improve or maybe change the mechanical model that seems to work, seems to look as we planned, but it's not uh, really manufacturable. Okay, uh, <laughs> a, good, a good switch, I think. Um, I believe that DFM is not only for uh, making something manufacturable because it's usually manufactured after the fourth phase of our design process yeah. because it's possible to manufacture um, with different techniques, with dif different technologies. But the problem is that uh, it's not efficient. Uh, it, it simply cannot be efficient to, uh, to be a designer and design uh, a model that is already efficient for manufacturing because uh, each manufacturing technology and even the um, distinct company that is going mm -hmm. to manufacture things or products for us um, has its own abilities and constraints so they work on their uh, their inputs what they have as a uh, manufacturing side, as ideas in their heads, as their um, experience in this area of manufacturing. And they give you, as designer or as a, uh, as a company, hints how this part can be made more efficiently with different technology, for example, or, or with different material. But when we have different material, we have to uh, maybe switch into uh, more detailed uh, drawings because maybe the tolerances or are different, or, yeah. or, 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 or the dimensions uh, should be different because for example wall thickness is not enough for this material um, these are all small steps into mm -hmm. into manufacturing but having a really deep review on these objects that you that you have designed is always better than yeah. not having the DFM process because you can of course probably make uh, molds out of the design that is after the fourth phase mold or you can manufacture it by CNC 3D printing mm -hmm. you, you can call it but when you step into the manufacturing and you want to um, and you don't want to lose money <laughs> you have to rethink uh, the part from the manufacturing perspective it's not only the technology itself that makes you money or makes you save money yeah. but sometimes it's mm, after the manufacturing uh, I mean the producing of the parts because then you have to assemble them yeah and of course there is another term that is called uh, design for assembly um, there are a lot of them because yeah. <laughs> every one of us have, uh, want want to make money 
uh, and and have their own field of expertise and wants to just take the bite out of this cake yeah. uh, for them. But yes, it's important. You have to design not only for manufacturing, but also the part to be assembled in, in, the, in the next step. So uh, when you have, uh, for example, three parts that are cheap, uh, it's okay if you manufacture or produce 100 pieces because it, uh, you, you don't care that it takes a little bit more time to assemble them. Yeah. But once you uh, have thousands or hundreds of thousands of products, you start to count the time. Yeah, because you have to time, be more efficient. Because you have to be efficient, because time is money. And when you lose one second on one single product, you lose 100,000 seconds on a product that is um, manufactured in this scale. So it's sometimes more efficient to design the part from this from scratch once again to be one part instead of three so that you have you don't have to assemble it and you of course invest your money in this uh, part or in the mold in the tool whatever but you don't lose time so you don't lose money okay so it's it's important but i think that also important thing to mention is that dfm is not for everyone because mm -hmm. when you want to start the production when you want to introduce the product in a small scale for example at a small scale it's not that super important yeah. to to for for this dfm to be as deep uh, focused on efficiency but you should focus more on delivering the product yeah uh, delivering is also difficult uh, and I think that uh, it is uh, a moment why, why we should s uh, speak about step number six, which is uh, production supervision. Mm -hmm. um, okay, when we switch roles, maybe <laughs> yeah. do you have some questions about it? Yeah, I, th I, I, uh, I just wanted to maybe wrap up how I see the uh, DFM phase, because for me it's uh, more or less tuning or adjusting the already existing mechanical design uh, to the needs of uh, a certain subcontractor, maybe, uh, while thinking about the wanted quality and wanted uh, or restricted by the client budget. Or okay. So that's, uh, that's all, all I had to add. Mm, but uh, the next phase, the, the supervision of the production, uh, I believe that it's even more mm, crucial regarding the, uh, the quality and the premium quality, for example, products and uh, um, stuff like that. Yes, the quality is important, but this step is not only about quality. I think that this step is about mm, still what I mentioned before, delivering the product mm -hmm. because uh, every design project, industrial design project, uh, is a set of small little details that eventually uh, are coming and becoming a product. It's a uh, conceptual phase, of course, but small details in mechanical phase, like small ideas that have to be materialized, then implemented into the design and repeated um, with a certain quality, yeah. what you have meant, um, mentioned. So uh, it is not only about the quality, but of course the quality drives, uh, drives the product um, perception. Because uh, when you get product that is at lower price point, you do not expect it to have good quality yeah that's true but more and more we expect the products to have uh, good quality so that we do not only have to manufacture parts uh, within uh, certain technologies but also, of course we have to check uh, if if it's maintained part, yes, for example if the part is mm, at the level of quality that we expect the part to be um, so that's why uh, we as designers probably know better what to expect from mm -hmm. the vendor or from the manufacturer because some 
of course it's not uh, 100 percent time because sometimes our clients are perfectly into the manufacturing they are just not into the design but uh, sometimes they are um, the clients just as an example client uh, whose expertise is in software they do not have experience in yeah in <laughs> physical product development because they have experience in product development which, which also is also iterative but uh, yes. much quicker and much less quicker. Uh, cost consuming i would say yes but but they expect sometimes from us as a company that has experience with uh, with physical products just to make sure that uh, these products that some third parties vendors are making um, are so that they are making good job because they have to know that before paying them uh, uh, usually a big amount of money <laughs> for for manufacturing okay mm, so uh, after manufacturing of, is of course something that is we are not speaking about it's all the things that marketing has to take yeah. <laughs> part in uh, launching the products launching the campaigns and uh, yes making the um spotlight though for future okay coming products i would say taking this product into the market uh, to, to wrap up okay so we are in this step of uh, between the idea and manufacturing but after manufacturing we are giving the job for the professionals that are um that are taking care of the product uh, to, to be on the market okay um, i would have uh, one more question for you uh, we were uh, briefly mentioning the time and uh, cost estimation but do you think that uh, it is possible to estimate uh, precisely uh, time that we will spend on something and cost that uh, something will uh, take cost of something uh, on each stage of the project on each phase we we've been speaking about it for i think months or years, years even uh, even uh, and uh, it is possible but uh, not in the whole design process okay it is possible between uh, step one and three um, because once we get uh, the idea from the client on on what the possible product this might be because we are usually it's still uh, there are some uh, exceptions from this rule but we usually design for a client that has the idea <laughs> yeah he has the idea he pro he most usually has the target group the expected price point so he already has some constraints for the project that he wish us to design but uh, if we don't have this it's it's not that they it's don't not exist that, yes it's, that it's just not we that don't. easy to estimate yeah. this cost <laughs> even on the first phase so yeah. um, but we've got a solution for that um, but if we are speaking of of the most usual scenario we are usually able to uh, to quote to cost estimate first three phases like the pre-design up to a targeted conceptual study why so because uh, we've got several hundreds of projects uh, already uh, already quoted and made and we know that this stage that is going uh, usually into making concepts not making the product yeah it's quite easier to estimate easier to control also yes for to us. control and easier to estimate the time spent because we've got a team we know how um, how big team do we need for for a particular project we can estimate how many people for how many time can work on this project to deliver the quality that uh, that is expected the, by the quality i mean how many concepts uh, how difficult the area of design is for example it's easier to design 
a glass, uh, it's harder to design a plane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, when we are speaking of glasses, there are hundreds of thousands of different shapes and how to make this unique one. Of course, it is also a challenge, but of a different sort. Yes, it's, uh, it's sort of a stylistic challenge or maybe uh, searching for certain technology that didn't, uh, that haven't been yet uh, deployed into this glass industry. Um, but uh, of course, it's a matter of research of some kind of proposition, of a conceptual mm -hmm. proposition. Yeah. How does uh, this part might look? So it's kind of easier, um, easier task. Forecast. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the, the most uh, crucial thing in delivering the product is uh, the second half of our design process. And it should be, uh, at least it should, because not all the customers allow us to, uh, to quote the project or estimate the cost after the third phase. They usually need to know the, 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 the higher and the lower price that they might expect yeah. uh, uh, regarding the, 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 the phase four and for the phase five. But um, we do not like to estimate this time because we do not know what we don't the know. topic. <laughs> and we don't know what we don't know yet. Yes, we don't know what we don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would like to switch the roles once again okay. and ask you about the prototyping. prototyping. Uh, because um, prototyping is, of course, a, another topic for another podcast or uh, another, uh, another uh, talk. Yeah. But um, regarding prototyping in the design process, how the prototyping comes in these steps, into these steps. Sh uh, should we think of prototyping at one particular step or should we think of prototyping as a process of prototyping? Uh, I think it is uh, the second, the process of prototyping, because uh, prototypes come to, to play, come to help us designers on basically each stage of the project. But they have different purpose on different stages of the project. So, for example, after the um, conceptual phase, we can prototype the general shape or general size of the uh, design object, and that will help us to maybe uh, estimate the pros and cons of uh, each of them. Uh, sometimes that helps our clients to make the decision with which of the concept uh, work further. Uh, during the targeted conceptual phase, we can prototype the plant uh, surface finishes, plant colors, and see how they might look in real life. And that's also a helpful thing, especially with those uh, projects that help a company to launch its existence so when they need to for example gain funding and stuff like that so they just need the really touchable concept to uh, proceed further rather than a full mechanical uh, and functional prototype um, as I mentioned the prototypes are also very important during the mechanical phase because they are there to um, serve us with knowledge to how to improve the uh, the design for uh, for those stuff we make uh, and then and those prototypes on the mechanical phase they also can be different because sometimes they are uh, made to ch to check is the if the house of the housing are fitting together sometimes those prototypes are made to maybe test the uh, idea of how to assemble uh, electronics inside of that device so uh, different prototypes check different stuff and uh, this is the definitely the uh, the tool for a designer that uh, can be helpful on uh, each phase and I believe uh, even during the DFM or even making the uh, injection molds uh, some first batch of the production during that can be called the prototype because the uh, injection mold it's not um, ready to go at uh, at the moment it is finished to be milled, for example. We need to tune it a little bit as well. So this is also sort of the prototyping. Okay, so you but you started from the step number two. Like yeah, we can true. prototype the, uh, the, concept, the, the concept. We can put the idea that we have on the table in a scale or in a one-to-one -one scale, 
it, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a matter of, of the budget and it's a matter of uh, is that really that needed so, to, to yeah. have the one-to-one -one scale yeah. uh, in the digital world uh, because we've got VRs and uh, all the different bunch of tools to, to show the prototype, to yeah. show the concept without prototyping. But how about the prototyping at the stage of uh, pre-design? Mm, I wouldn't call it prototyping. Uh, I think it's easier to call it a proof of concept because sometimes uh, during the pre-design, when we are uh, kind of testing the grounds and testing what we can do and what we cannot do, uh, we need to find out if the idea that it's behind the product uh, will work. For example, we can build the very crude version of some sort of the mechanism that will be put in that project further to check if, if it is something we can proceed, we can put it into our brief and then build that design onto it. So it's more of a, it's also testing, but testing the, the general idea, I would say. So, okay. So proof of concept is some, it's kind of a prototype, yeah. but it's not, um, not a prototype to test the certain functionality, but a prototype to test the idea. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Let's say that. That's why we call it proof of concept rather yeah. than a prototype. And because sometimes proof of concept are more of the R and D uh, part of the project, and R and D has a totally different uh, nature than the uh, design process. So that's I, that's why I would like to separate it. Okay. Yeah. I think that um, we have missed one little thing that makes the design process huge rather than small. It's called the time. Mm -hmm. uh, because so far we've, uh, we have been speaking about this process like we are going to work on Monday and starting with the step number one, uh, we are searching for different ideas, we yeah. are uh, focusing more on discovering the uh, the possibilities, the the, the the client needs, and so on. Uh, we we are going to design um, three beautiful or three four I don't know name it, but usually three concepts. Um, so we we make them. Uh, then our clients uh, our client look. Um, at the concepts or says wow or says okay it's good but i would like to improve concept number name it then we jump into the targeted conceptual phase on wednesday <laughs> uh, then we do the mechanical model model on thursday and on friday we are ready for the fm is that true no, i really believe not you, you know it's it's not true I'm regret to inform the audience that it takes years <laughs> the whole process from the uh, very idea to the uh, implemented uh, project, implemented product. Uh, it, and as you mentioned with the costs, it's easier to estimate uh, the time we'll uh, spend on the first three phases, and it's harder to estimate how much time we'll spend on the uh, later phases of the project. And this is not um, necessarily only the fault of the iterative nature of the process of those phases, but also, for example, even the um, starting the conversation with potential subcontractors during the DFM phase and uh, making all of the legal work that it's necessary for a very costly uh, cooperation. It also can take six, eight months sometimes because, uh, for example, um, due to the uh, non-disclosure agreements and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, let's uh, maybe separate these steps into time frames so that uh, our beloved clients uh, might have uh, a better Argument understanding a better understanding on how much time does um, does each step take uh, so that they can know what to expect from us and from uh, themselves <laughs> regarding uh, budgeting uh, time framing the project because it's not that easy to introduce a product into the market uh, we, we have to say it maybe multiple times yeah uh, but um, but let's start with the pre-design how much time do we as designers need at our company to make a proper pre-design phase so maybe let's settle up that we have not uh, let's say 
medium complexity project, not uh, very easy, but not also very uh, demanding. To yes, we have to make some assumptions. Some assumptions, yeah. So, so uh, pre-design for such object that doesn't require the proof of concept, that will take about three or four weeks even. Because uh, collecting and um, excavating all the knowledge from our client, clients' heads uh, can take weeks because we need to uh, have a lot of data. Mm -hmm. um, then we have conceptual phase, so that's about six to eight weeks, I would say, for um, three and concepts. What does take so much time? I know that it's not so much time for a designer, but six weeks or eight weeks is two months of waiting for the perfect three concepts that we that we would like to see. Um, Why does it take so much time? We never make three concepts. We all we usually show three concepts. <laughs> we usually make m uh, much more of them with a big team to uh, collect the three, the best one to, to share and to, uh, to share with our client, I would say. At this phase, the bigger team comes to the place. So we have uh, uh, a lot of people to maybe brief or introduce to the project. They will have to make their uh, analyzing part, I would say. And uh, then the creative part starts and we are starting from nothing. We don't have any ideas uh, before we start to draw, to start to 3D model or maybe start to sculpt in the, uh, I don't know, clay or stuff like that. Uh, and then we are creating much more than three concepts. Uh, we are just showing the three best concepts that uh, are building the, the whole spectrum of uh, possibilities that our client can go to uh, with their idea. So uh, that takes a lot of time. The whole creating uh, in our heads on, on paper uh, how the stuff should look. And then we are have next phase when we have take those work in progress concepts into the engineering software or the rendering software when we are preparing the visual part of, uh, of what we're presenting. So that uh, takes up to two weeks sometimes because we need to show not only uh, how that product will look in the sleek studio, but also how it would, would look like in the real life. So this is also time consuming, yeah. Okay, so uh, breaking up these eight week periods or six even weeks yeah. week period, it comes that we've got only two weeks for design. We've got two weeks for preparation, yeah. two weeks for design and two weeks for uh, presenting or making the presentation the presentation for the client because it still take, takes time uh, so yep. so of course uh, sometimes we uh, these processes are in parallel because when you uh, discover the possibilities you already have some concepts in your head you yeah. are just making them better um, true okay and uh, we also try. We also like to uh, check how it's going along the way. So we are meeting uh, meet work uh, with all of the team uh, and check with uh, if all of the concepts that we are working on have all of the requirements uh, regarding all of the constraints and etc. etc. So yes. that also takes time. Like uh, you know, reviewing. To, yes, the, we have uh, to make reviews. We have yeah. to double check some things so that we are producing the concepts that are answering the brief. Yeah. Uh, that was set on the pre-design phase. Okay, sure. okay. Three um, uh, concept one is one month. Uh, concept one, pardon. Um, phase one. It means the pre-design is about one usually month. a month. Yeah, because um, the legal conceptual stuff also. phase is about two months. So we have three months yeah. already passed. Yeah. Uh, how about the uh, targeted conceptual study? Uh, it depends. <laughs> okay. It depends. Uh, sometimes uh, it takes a week or two because our client doesn't want to implement any changes into choosing design. That's uh, like a very dream scenario, I would say. But sometimes we have to work a little bit more to uh, make it look uh, as they want to, uh, to maybe not only uh, make our customer happy, but also uh, designer happy because we are trying to work in a way that also satisfies us. So we are also, it's another um, phase that we are um, facing some challenges with meeting different <laughs> inside and outside requirements, I would say. Uh, yeah, but uh, usually it's, it, it's about uh, one week up to three weeks, I would say.
while we are speaking of uh, the the conceptual phase uh, or the first half of the process, we can call uh, or we can estimate that it takes more or less four to six months. Yeah, that's a safe guess. Um, maybe let's not deep dive into the mechanical phase in DFM and manufacturing because as you've said already, it might take even months to um, to be on the same page in the agreement between uh, manufacturer, client, manufacturer and the client. And us. Yeah. Yes. So, so, so these legal parts, these uh, um, supply chain... Uh, or waiting in a queue for the uh, tooling company to uh, take our project. Yes. Okay. Certification. Certification. Medical um, certification. Yeah. Even even th this uh, regular certification for for each uh, consumer electronics product, yeah. like uh, the EMC certification for for electromagnetic uh, yeah. uh, certif certifies, uh, uh, takes time. So this process, as a whole, might might take from months, I believe not weeks, but months. Months, yeah. Um, two, three, four months, up to year, year, year and a half, or even two years. Or even two years. That's true. Um, we've got these examples in our portfolio that the product uh, that we made a concept for uh, were manufactured after uh, half a year, but we've got also the product. The, the longest awaited product that we have uh, took nine years from concept to uh, manufacturing. But uh, the fun fact is that it was not the problem of the product itself because it, it was, was one, one of the easiest mechanical, mechanical yes, wise. Because it was, uh, you, you know, mechanical wise, it was quite easy project. <laughs> but the problem was uh, that the client didn't have time. Uh, to implement, it. To yeah. implement <laughs> this this idea into the market, but he eventually did it. So so that was uh, really cool to see. Long the waited project uh, award after nine years of uh, after the conceptual phase. Good. So we focused on the process itself, on the time frames yeah. that we have. I think the most important things uh, we have covered. Of course, we are not saying about the budget. Uh, and uh, the costs of such a project. Uh, this depends on the complexity, on the complexity, on very, very little details might uh, take the price and the budget higher. Yeah. And uh, even big changes might take the price down. So, um, speaking of price, without having a baseline or an idea to cover. I think is not uh, point not basically. very relevant. Yeah. Okay, so I believe that uh, not only we have the understanding of the process, but also our listeners. I hope so. Um, thank you for for the good talk. Thank you. Um, and talk to you soon in different topics.